everybody and welcome to another board game discussion video. In this particular video I'm going to be talking about something that is perplexingly both extremely broad in definition but also very very specific and very very narrow and that is war games. And this is going to be a pretty interesting one and as always I am particularly for this topic I'm very excited to hear what you guys have to say about it. So please leave any and all thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. You guys know I'm not really a war gamer. So that's why I said particularly I would love to hear what you guys say about this topic. And as always if you haven't done so already please take a look at my Facebook and my Twitter. That's where I post new videos, contests, giveaways, fun articles, all sorts of different stuff. And you know it's just another way to interact potentially as well. That said for this particular discussion what I'll be doing is I'll be talking very briefly about what I know about war games and then I'll be talking more about what people have told me and just sort of like concluding like you know this is this is sort of what I think because again I am not a war gamer most of what I know comes from other people and what they think and what games they enjoy and stuff like that so essentially my understanding for from war games is that you have two very basic ideas in terms of how you can separate them. You've got things like skirmish games and then you have more the actual quote-unquote tactical war games. So skirmish games are things like the ones that I've talked about and the ones that I have and I'm familiar with. And um, so I did a top five war games video and these are the types of games that I discussed where things like mythic battles and um, uh, like Memoir 44 and stuff along those lines where really mechanically they're relatively simple. You still have things like um, you're using miniatures a lot of the time, you've got a map of some sort, you've got like tactics, cards, something along those lines. One thing that I really really enjoy that goes along with my shirt is Star Wars Rebellion. Now me, I would consider that to be a war game. A lot of people would consider it to be a skirmish game though. So it's, it's kind of interesting because I'll show you guys a couple of examples real quick. One thing that I have that I've had for a very long time are these games, the uh, Panzer General. So I've actually got two of these. I've got Russian Assault and then I've got Allied Assault. And these are games that are actually based off of video games that are in Xbox Live Arcade, or at least they were, I don't know if they still are. But in this case, you are using tanks. This is tank battles, so you may notice that this is actually Ubisoft right there. Um, so in that sense alone, it's really interesting that we're starting off with video games, right? It's not like World of Tanks or anything like that, but still. To me, this is like a pretty tactical skirmish game. Um, the thing is that a lot of war gamers are obsessed with hexes. Everything has to be hex. If it's not a hexagon, then it's not a war gaming board, you know, stuff like this. And, like, for me, this is a war game. Like, it makes perfect sense. It's taking place during World War II, which is another aspect about a lot of war games. You are talking about a direct player versus player combat utilizing units that have different stats. Um, so for me, this is very much war game, but a lot of people don't consider it a real war game. And again, a lot of that boils down to how you do the movements, how you do the setup, how this can accommodate different scenarios of different battles and stuff like that. And that's a lot of what some of this stuff comes down to, is what scenarios are you able to run, how smoothly do they run, how accurately do they run, what kind of victory conditions do you have, are those historically accurate, all this kind of stuff. You have a lot of these sort of like pure, purest war gamers who are like, if it's not about an actual war, like if it's a sci-fi thing, then it's not really a war game. If you're talking about World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, whatever the war happens to be, it needs to be like a specific battle or a specific campaign, something along those lines, that has very specific victory conditions related to that exact thing. Um, so just like getting into what people have told me about it. Again, I really don't know. This is not my area of expertise, and that's why I'm more curious what you guys have to say. Moving on to something else that I... This is one that I would not consider a war game, but that some people may or may not. And it's one of my favorite games of all time, actually, Twilight Struggle. Now, in this game, I consider this to be a political game. I do not consider this a war game, even though you have 
war involved. So you have cards that are related to like the Arab-Israeli war and the Indo-Pakistani war and the Korean war and Vietnam and all these kinds of things. You have cards related to that, but you are not directly controlling any sort of units. You're not moving them around on a grid. Um, you don't have any sort of like terrain effects or anything along those lines, which I see even in like skirmish games, you see that type of thing. But for this, this is really more about political, but some people call this a war game because it's about the Cold War. Therefore, it is a war game. So I'm kind of like, maybe? I don't know. I personally do not consider it a war game. And most war gamers that I talk to, what few I do know who are really intense about it, do not consider Twilight Struggle to be a war game. Fine. I, I understand that. I understand that because I agree with them. Uh, one of the other ones I wanted to talk about very briefly is Axis and Allies. So Axis and Allies, obviously World War II, you've got Pacific, you've got Europe. I personally have the Europe edition. And for me, like that's, that is more war game-ish, but I don't think it's as intense as most of these like purist war gamers want it to be. It's not as involved and it's not as decision based and it's not as goal based and all this kind of stuff. It's more just like risk on steroids. So it's a very, very complex, very deep game, but it's sort of a bigger version of risk, which incidentally is also not a war game. For me personally, the one game that I do have that is probably the most similar to what a real war gamer would consider to be an actual war game is one that I only just got relatively recently. I got it as a gift for my birthday and I was very excited. The game itself is Ukraine 43. So this comes to us from GMT Games. GMT makes a lot of war games of all different sorts. They did make Twilight Struggle, the one I just talked about, but in this game you do have hexes. Awesome! You were talking about a very specific campaign that occurred where the um, it was the Germans and Soviets fighting in Ukraine. That's why it's Ukraine 43. And so you've got those, those two aspects and that's, that's why this is the summer offensive against Army Group South because that's what the Soviets were doing. They were attacking the Germans. Um, so you've got your hexes, you've got your terrain, you've got your rivers, you've got um, different units. So you've got your infantry units, you've got your uh, planes, I believe you've got tanks as well. Uh, so some of them have tanks. Um, you've got specific characters, you've got like the generals who are in charge, at least on the Soviet side, I believe. Um, but yeah, so you, for me, at least from what I have heard, from what I have heard people talk about, this would probably be considered a war game. But I don't know. Um, I, it's in the war game category of Board Game Geek, but so is everything else that I've talked about that is technically not war games for the, uh, the purists. So I, I think this one's probably the closest, at least. Um, the one thing, incidentally, that I don't really like about this, the component quality in this game is not great. The, uh, the board is actually just like a piece of paper. It's not an actual board, which is a little bit annoying. But either way, those are the main games that I wanted to talk about. Other than that, when I did my top five war game video, it was mostly skirmish games because that's what I knew, that's what I considered war games, and then I had a lot of comments from people who are like real war gamers who really, really are into this kind of thing, and who mentioned a lot of different ones. One thing that kept coming up over and over and over again was Pass of Glory. Now, I've looked at it, I've read about it, and I think that it is absolutely incredible, and honestly, I want to play it. For me, that's why I think that the Ukraine 43 is probably considered a war game because it is relatively similar similar to Paths of Glory in terms of how it functions and how it works. Uh, another one was uh, World, in, uh, World in Flames or World of Flames, I want to say it's World in Flames. And then there's the Command and Color series that includes a lot of different games. I think there's one or two about Napoleon, uh, Napoleonic era uh, combat and war that, that are really, really big in that. And then of course there's Horus Heresy, which is Warhammer 40k. I personally am not a big fan of Warhammer, but Horus Heresy is always coming up on my channel in comments as a game that's a really, really good, well done strategy board game. Um, which again, can you call it a board game or a war game? Can it only be one? But either way, that's part of why I wanted to do this video because this is a really interesting topic, honestly. This is something that I had never heard of because I am not 
in the wargaming aspect. Like Warhammer 40k itself with, you know, people who are really intense with like the games workshop, painting the miniatures, painting the terrain, having the big giant suitcases of all the minis, all of that kind of stuff. That is like, for me at least, the ultimate war game type of thing. But in general, on, uh, so reading up on this stuff, we've got essentially like the tactical aspect, the operational aspect, and then like the campaign aspects. So at a tactical level, you're talking more about like a singular battle type of thing. Operational level, you're including things like supply chains and stuff along those lines. And then at the campaign level, then you've got more like the big picture. So the campaign would be something like uh, Axis and Allies. Well, you know, whether or not you consider it a war game, that is very much something that is happening at a larger, big scale type of thing operational aspect where you're talking about making sure that you've got supplies and things like that. If memory serves, I believe Paths of Glory does that pretty well. Um, and then tactical, again, you're talking about, you know, side A, side B, and here are all of the units. So like the direct unit combat type of thing. And on that note, you know, like Star Wars X-Wing miniatures or Star Wars Armada, are those considered war games? I would consider them a war game, because it's got the miniatures, you, you've got to measure out the movement, you've got to measure out the, um, you've got your tactics cards that you're playing that allows your things to move in different ways and um, be able to like hook around and shoot and you've got your, rain, your, um, your ability to fire only in certain spots, all that kind of stuff. I would consider that a war game, but I would imagine a lot of people wouldn't. So. It's really interesting, and that's why I said the, the big reason why I wanted to, to make this video is simply because this is literally something that, depending on who you talk to, is extremely broad, where it will include most things that have some sort of one versus one combat in it, so like Risk could be considered a war game, or you can have it be as narrow as possible where it has to be something historic, it has to be a specific battle or a specific campaign that has these specific victory conditions that you are able to achieve in this specific way. So. It, it's just really interesting and I've had a wonderful time talking to you guys about it so I would just love to open it up even further and hear what you guys have to say now that I've learned at least a little bit more mostly from all of you commenting on my other videos I, I the biggest thing I'm curious about is what to you is the definition of a war game when I did my top five I gave a, a brief definition that was essentially you've got a board you've got miniatures and you have some sort of, um, you, you're controlling the miniatures obviously, but you've got some um, difference in the minis. So they've got some kind of cards or some guide that tells you what they're able to do. That was sort of my very, very generalized war game definition. And I know that now that's, there's a lot more to it, again, just depending on who you talk to. You know, do you think hexes are required? I never realized hexes were a thing until I started reading more about it. But either way, that's enough rambling for me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and just my brief discussion on this. Again, it's an incredible topic and I really would love to hear what you guys have to say about it. So please leave any and all thoughts in the comments below on this. And again, don't forget to check out my Facebook and my Twitter if you haven't done so already so you can see announcements. But with that, especially especially this time, thank you guys so much. I have learned a tremendous amount about not only war games, but pretty much everything else. But specifically for this video, I have learned a ridiculous amount about war games and the genre itself. So thank you guys very, very much. It's been incredible and I look forward to hearing even more.